All right, guys, so now I want to play our game that we've played before on video. It's called Nothing, Nothing, Something. Do you remember this game? So this game requires you to listen carefully one of your senses. And I'm going to use describing words. Remember adjectives? I'm going to describe things for you and you see... If when you're using your listening ears for my voice, you can figure out what I might have in my hand. And this is something really fun that I hope that you do at home or have done at home with your grown-ups. So I have nothing, nothing, something. Oh my goodness. The thing that I have in my hand, it's Oh, it's round. It's soft and kind of fuzzy. Mm, and, oh, <clears throat> it's small. I can squish it. Hmm. Do you think you know what I'm holding in my hand? I know you think it's nothing, but there's something there. What do you think I have? I'm describing a pom-pom, like one of the pom-pom balls from your little kid. Oh, I lost my pom-pom. Hold on one second. <clears throat> Sorry. I thought I had it here. So... It's round. It's soft. I dropped it. It's fuzzy. Here, I have another one. It's fuzzy. It's round. It squishes. Yeah. So, I used my describing words. What if I said I had... Mm, let's see. I have nothing, nothing, something. Hmm. There's something in my hand. It's hard. Mm, it's it's kind of it's small. It's kind of smooth, but it has a little bit of bumpiness on the surface shaped like a circle and hmm, it's brown what do you think I have in my hand a penny a penny is a circle it's brown it's hard it's smooth with some bumps all right let's try a different one ready something oh sorry <laughs> nothing Nothing. <gasps> Something. Ooh, what do you think? Oh, it's cold. I think we did this one before. It's cold. It's kind of squishy. Oh no. It's it's melting. What do you think I have? Snow. Snow. Um, what if we said nothing? Nothing. Something. Ooh, the thing I'm holding now is mm, it's kind of soft. Mm, kind of squishy. Yeah, I can change the shape of it. So yeah, a little sticky. What do you think it is? If you take a little piece of Play-Doh out, you can change the shape. It's soft and squishy. So practice that game with your, with your grown-ups. That's a fun game. See if you can have them guess what you, what you think you're holding, what you're pretending you're holding in your hand. Or you could really hold something if you can keep it hidden from them. All right, so... 
we're going to do a little bit of science here in just a minute. I just got to get my stuff together. So I'll be right back. All right, friends. So we have a science activity now. And we love science. I know some of my friends might want to be scientists when they grow up. Scientists observe things. That means they look at things and notice changes and notice things that are going on. They look at things very carefully. And we like to do that at school a lot. And we like to uh, explore things and observe them and see what, what new things from we see. And today we have um, an experiment that um, we're going to talk about in just a minute. All right, my friends. So today we have an experiment with this. What is this? Ice. It's an ice cube. Um, you may have trays of these in your freezer. Some people have um, ice cubes that have a machine inside their freezer that makes these are from an ice cube tray. So I have several ice cubes and I made sure they were all about the same size when I froze them. I put, what is ice? Do you know? How do we make an ice cube? It's just frozen water, right? So um, we put water in an ice cube tray and put it in the freezer until it comes into a a solid block. So what today I want you to look at some ice cubes that I have here and tell me what you notice about them. So I chose dark paper so that you can see what's going on with these ice cubes. So what happens when you leave an ice cube out? Yeah. It starts to melt. So as a scientist, I'm looking at these and I'm thinking, do you notice a difference between this ice cube? So I put three ice cubes on the paper. And when I put this ice cube on the paper, I also put one in the cup at the same time. When I put this ice cube in the on the paper, I put this ice cube in this cup at the same time. And this one I just now put on the paper when I um, after I showed it to you. And I also put this ice cube just in the cup at the same time. So what do you notice is happening to the ice? It melts when we take it out of the freezer and leave it in the room temperature it starts to melt. Water freezes at 32 degrees and the freezer is colder than that so it stays frozen. But the, the air in my house is 70 degrees so it's making the ice melt. You know like when we had all the snow the other day and now most of the snow is gone because it has melted. Snow is also frozen water. Um, so if you look at this, can you make a guess of which ice cube has melted the most? Like I have taken it out the longest. This was the first ice cube I took out and I took that out. Let me look at my watch about t almost 20 minutes ago, 19 minutes ago. I took this one out of the freezer and do you see the cup? What's happening in the cup? There's water in there because the ice cube is melting. So this one has the most water around it, right? And if you use construction paper, you can see it really easily. If you choose to use a white paper or white paper towel, you could put food coloring in the water and then it will make it easier to see. Um, this ice cube I took out about 12 minutes ago. So this is 19 minutes it's been melting, 12 minutes it's been melting, and just, just about three minutes. 
for this one and this one. So you can see all the water that's collecting on this one and you can see that. So in the cup, which cup do you think has the most water and the least ice? Right, this one, because these two were taken out at the same time. This one has the middle amount of water and a little bit of water in the cup. And this ice cube is just starting to show water on the paper and water in the cup. All right. So that's an experiment that you can do at home to see how long it takes for one to melt. Um, I have a surprise for you. All right, my friends. So what do you think is in this big Ziploc bag? Yep. Look, I collected snow when it was snowing so much the other day. I went outside and decided to freeze it so I could show you. I could use this on our science day. And I just wanted to play with the snow. <laughs> so, I said that snow, we call this precipitation. When water falls from the sky... In rain or snow, it's precipitation. So anyway, snow is just a bunch of little ice crystals, snowflakes, right? So I decided to take this out to see um, how quickly it would melt compared to the ice cubes. Do you think that snow will melt faster than ice cubes or <laughs> slower than ice cubes? You can make that in a experiment at your house if you still have snow outside or when we get new snow. So if you look, see all the little droplets? What do you think? Do you think snow will melt faster than an ice cube or will an ice cube melt faster than the snow? The snow will melt faster, and you can try that at your house if you ask a grown-up, because these are all little tiny ice pieces of ice, but they're spread out. Um, they're not close together, so they will melt faster. An ice cube is ice, but they're all really tightly packed together. It's solid. So this will take longer to melt than this will take to melt. All right. So that was a good science activity. Using your observation skills. Watching things carefully. All right. Let's move on to another activity. Did you have fun with the science? I knew you'd like to play with ice. So this is our day that we do gross motor activities. And we've done this activity in our classroom before. Everybody should have the box of balls that has a pump in it. And we, I blew up two balls, but you only need one. But these ones will bounce better than the one I used last time that we did a video. So do you remember this activity? I'm going to change the other one since I'm going to use the basket one. All right, so we practiced. Catching with two hands. Can you throw it up? Can you catch it? Throw it up. Can you see how high you can throw it? Can you throw it with one hand? Can you catch it? That's harder, huh? All right, let's practice doing it six times. Ready? One, two, Can you practice bouncing it on the floor? Can you bounce it with one hand and catch it with one hand? All right, let's see. Can you do 
bounce it with both hands and push it down. Push it to the floor and then it will come back. We push. When we bounce, we push. Push. Push the ball down. Push it down. Push it down. You see, I have two hands pushing it. I pushed it with my right hand. Remember, this is right. And this is left. So I'm pushing it with my right hand. And then I'm going to push it with my left hand. Miss Paula is right handed, so it's easier for me to do stuff with my right hand. Woo! <laughs> okay, I lost my ball. All right, remember we did things like you can spell the letters of your name. I can say P, A, U, L, A. You could bounce it to counting. We could count to 20. One, two, three, four. Do you keep going? Count to 20. So you can count and bounce. You can practice with one hand, switch hands, two hands, throw your ball up and catch it. It's a good activity for you. You can do it. You have enough balls that you could do it with a partner, with a, with a grown-up or a brother or sister or somebody that's at your house. All right, friends. So I will be doing story time in just a few minutes.